The charge controller is one of the main components when you're setting and planning out your solar system. This piece takes the energy from the solar panels and, well, controls it. The main purpose of a charge controller is to prevent the batteries from overcharging. In theory, you could connect the solar panels straight to your batteries, but I wouldn't recommend that since they'd probably explode, turning your cozy van dwelling experience into a flaming metal death trap, which may inconvenience you for the remainder of the day. What the controller does is directly read the battery level, and once the battery is full, it knows to slow down the rate of solar charge to a float, keeping it from charging the batteries past 100%. This is important, as overcharging the batteries can absolutely ruin them. Another purpose of the controller is to charge the batteries at the correct voltage level. This helps preserve the life and health of the batteries. Also, some controllers have a special characteristic which allows you to wire your panels in, in a special way to achieve your charging goals. Now, there are two types of charge controllers. We have pulse width modulation, or PWM for short. This is the old school style, they're robust, inexpensive, and widely used in all solar panel applications. The second type is the maximum power point tracking, or MPPT. These controllers actually detect the optimum operating voltage and amperage of the solar panel array and match with the battery bank. If none of that really made sense, don't worry, because the difference between these two types of controllers is very simple. PWM is just not as efficient as the MPPT. The MPPT is the most common these days and can gain up to 30% more power than the other types. The MPPT controllers also allow strings of panels to be connected in a series for higher voltage. Now you're thinking, well why wouldn't I just want the best one? Well because the best ones cost more. Now, the easiest way to figure out which model to get is to ask a salesman or use one of the solar company's measuring tools. I'll link to Renogy's sizing calculator below. Now, when you figure out if you can get away with the cheaper controller or if you want the more efficient controller, you then have to determine your amp requirements. For me, I have four solar panels, each producing 100 watts, so that's 400 watts total. System voltage is determined by your batteries. If you have 12 volt deep cycle batteries, then it's a 12 volt system. If you have two, and you connect them together like I did in parallel, then it's a 12 volt system as well. If you have two connected in series, you add the voltage together and it becomes a 48 volt system. Let's keep things simple and I recommend a 12 volt system. So let's do this math one more time. It's 100 times 4 is 400 watts divided by 12 volts in the system is 33.3 repeating of course amps. Don't worry I'll put the calculations in the video description too. I don't like to do all this math when you're coming up with something that could electrocute you. So we need 33.3 amps so we have to make sure that the controller has enough for that. The max I've seen a PWN controller go up to is 30. The closest one to my needs is the 40 amp MPPT charger. But of course you have to account for temperature changes too. In cold weather, the voltage actually gets higher. In the end, I went with the Tracer A series 40 amp MPPT controller. The link for that is below. There's also this cool one that comes with this Wi-Fi app for your phone. I don't know if it's any good, but it looks pretty neat. The Amazon link in the description also has a charge monitor. Now these normally cost about $50 by themselves and they're worth it. Try to navigate uh, the pages of menus with only two buttons on the stock charge controller is nearly impossible and will take hours of your time. I highly recommend this MT50. Also, for some reason, even though it comes with a Cat5 Ethernet cable, there are these warnings about connecting it to a computer. So I wouldn't plug it in lest you screw up the firmware or something and um, I'm sure that's equally as dangerous. It's a nice monitor too, it comes with a mounting stand. Although I couldn't find out where I wanted to put it and have access to it all the time. So I had the temporary fix of leaving it loose to figure out in a normal day-to-day -day life where I wanted it. But in the end, I ended up just not mounting it yet. It's actually really convenient to have it movable depending on where I want to sit on the couch. And the cable is like 3-4 to four feet. Here's the positive and the negative for the solar power. This is the PV that comes in from the panels. 
There's the positive and negative for the battery. And then this is where I wire in the fuse box. This cable over here is the Cat5 Ethernet cable that goes into the monitor. Now I highly recommend getting some type of monitor. This is the MT50. Now this is important because there's a ton of settings on the control panel. And you don't want to do that with just the two buttons of the other one. We can see all the different settings and analytics here. All of the recommended numbers will be in the manual. This is important to set the, your type of battery. We have the AGM gel batteries, and you change it to gel, and you change it to however many amp hours you have. And it goes through and it will tell you different things, different uh, settings. You're gonna wanna read the manual and check with each battery to see what each uh, setting should be set at. You can even turn on and off the appliances from the fuse box with just the button. And you can tell this little guy is very happy today, even with only two solar panels on. Here's a brief overview of the entire solar system layout. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to go more in depth in the next video. This is just kind of a brief idea to get you to understand where each component comes into play. So we see the solar comes in here, then it comes out through the batteries. These are wired in parallel. And then from the batteries, we, we get the inverter that's back here, it wires back through here. There's a ground that goes into the wall here. And then these two go to the fuse box. If you have any questions about the electrical system or really anything else, let me know and I'll make sure to cover it for you.